This, 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 this is the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. The Brought to you by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Tom Thumb Albertsons, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Bacardi. Live passionately, drink responsibly. Bacardi. Now your hosts, Kevin Turner, Taylor Stern, and Brad Shan. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Cowboys Hour. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for being with us this evening Woo. at the Omni Frisco. Uh, the, and the sun's right right in our eyes. Yeah, it's here. another sunshades night. It is, but the, but the calendar is turning, and so that'll drop down behind us here in a minute. And uh, so the Cowboys are now uh, working on their next winning streak. That's uh, the precursor of Victory Monday. That's, that's what happens. Nobody's, nobody goes unbeaten. And uh, there were notable things to happen last night and great things to talk about with our very special guest. We are delighted to have uh, long snapper L.P. Ladassar. So very nice, Louis Philippe, to have you with us. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. And uh, very versatile uh, offensive lineman, Xavier Suafilo X. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I, I'll tell you, I do want to start off with our policy is to always touch on the game, good or bad. We may touch a little longer on, or not, so we won't touch much tonight. But, but there was one aspect that, and LP, you were one of the first ones I thought of. The, the noise was singular, and you've played in noisy stadia before, so that wasn't brand new. But um, clearly that's one of the toughest places, and I always wonder – for the long snapper, I mean, for you to have never had a hiccup uh, since uh, in 15 years, uh, has he hic- has he hiccuped and I didn't he, notice it? He's That's, knocking no. on no, he's wood. Knocking on wood. Yeah, knocking on wood. Okay, good. Uh, what what do you do to um, compensate or for or adjust to a noisy environment like that? Well, uh, noise doesn't make a big difference for for the punt team field goal team uh you know we kind of hire our we are in our um, own little ways if you want but um obviously the punt can get tricky um that's why last night a couple quick snaps um so it's kind of all on me uh, instead of letting them show us what they're doing um so we set up the tempo and it worked out for the first two punts and then um that's kind of how we've always handled it, uh, but it's not a, you know, the noise or not, you know, it's, it's, it's not like we have to make audibles and what Dak has to do on, you know, on the basis of, you know, every play. So. Well, how do you practice that? Well, uh, 15 I mean, years. <laughs> uh, do, I mean, <laughs> seriously, do you get, it out. I, I, I mean, it, look, Keith O'Quinn's a really good special teams coach, <laughs> but you've, you've had several of them, and I think, that is kind of my question. Do you and Chris, who's the, both the holder and the punter, and then and then Brett in this case, do you get together and say, okay, boys, here's what we're doing? Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll usually come together on Fridays and say, um, you know, let's let's do a couple quick punts, um, get up there and, and set the tempo. Um, and it's, you know, you change up the routine. Um, so defense are more on their toes. But, you know, we, we talk about it sometimes right before pregame, sometimes before the <laughs> actual punt. <laughs> um, but it's it's kind of a work in progress. Do, I mean, yes. you do that. Sometimes you'll change it and do something different just yes. before a given punt? Yeah, just because of what they've given us, let's say, the last two, three, you know, punt returns. And you know, this guy, if he sits, you know, if he's standing there, we're going to go a little faster and, you know, just little things like that. Is that something that you had talked to Chris about right before? Is it something the whole line has talked about? Or is it just – Kind of, we're going on instinct and experience here. Yeah, you know, the, the good thing about our punt team the past seven years is we huddle before the punt. Okay. And so, you know, Jeff is our personal protector, and, um, and we're Jeff Heath is our personal protector, and um, we kind of just go off of what he says, and, you know, every once in a while I'll go tell him, say, hey, I think we can got this look. Uh, well, let's, let's go a little faster here. But if obviously crowd noise, um, if we would have gotten a different look, you know, obviously – a lot of teams, the personal protector will show the hand um, so the snapper can see it. Okay, and now we're ready to snap and get going. 
Something to look for. Now, uh, X, how about in the offensive line? How do, you, how do you make adjustments to the noise so you can hear, get the playoff without a false start? Yeah. Uh, adjust to what the st- different jumping around on the defensive line? Yeah, for us it's just um, all about communication. Uh, actually, yesterday we didn't have any false starts. Um, everybody was on the um, same Close page, and that's that. really, that's really um, you know, difficult to do sometimes. And so um, – it all starts, you know, with Dak in our huddle and when we're on the ball, Dak making sure he communicates um, with Zeke and with the offensive line. And Travis does a fantastic job getting all the guys on the same page, and uh, that's across the board. And so um, when it's really, really loud and we got to go on the silent cadence or uh, whatever, as long as we're communicating on the same page, whether that's verbal communication or nonverbal, uh, then that's um, basically the, how we handle that. I, I uh, want to just... I don't mean to digress, uh, but for those uh, of you who are watching us, uh, whenever you might be watching us streamed uh, live or later in the week on DallasCowboys.com. Hi, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> and 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 it, and if you saw me kind of taken aback, it's because Kevin Turner was just delivered a special iced tea. I think Is that's that right. Your special your special iced tea. That's right. Is that kind of grandpa's cough medicine type thing. Very good so for I can you. Slide yeah. it on the table because yeah, this okay. is the Miller Lite Cowboy Hour. It, it absolutely is, and that, that and then that kind of looked like one to me. So uh, so off we go. All right. Um, you know, fans. Both of you are veterans, uh, and and you've been around the block a couple times. So please address how you keep your perspective. Fans are. Very enthusiastic and uh, delighted to share in all the triumphs. And Roger Staubach once said, uh, the one great thing about our fans is they love you, win or tie. And, and, <laughs> Not when you lose. And, and so, uh, you know, the, when you have passion, uh, and certainly Cowboy fans have passion, then the highs are high and the uh, lows are, are uh, suicidal and someone must be <laughs> deported instantly. Oh, uh, you say that with LP here. <laughs> no. LP's now he's an a American. Citizen. LP's an American. Are you, by the way, are you, do you have full dual on. citizenship? Full. Yeah, full, right? Well, full. It, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think they do dual citizenship. I am still a citizen of Canada. I'm still, and I'm and you're a full, brand new yeah. American citizen. And we're going to get into yeah. that. Right. No, we're going to get into that. Claps to that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think so. You have two citizenships. I think Correct. that's called a dual. <laughs> no, they don't. They, they don't consider it dual. It's kind of a weird thing. I asked too, and I was, no, they don't consider it dual. And I was like, it's just okay. two. Just it's double yeah. do it. Yeah, just Canada and okay. the United States. But so, uh, back to it, Brad. I yeah, apologize. I'll, I'll get right back where I was in a minute as soon as I remember where so they the were. So the fans. The fans. Thank right, you. Fans. Um, so, how do you how do you tune out the Negativity. What was right? I mean, you, I don't know if you do your own grocery shopping or <laughs> fill up your own trucks or what. But hey, what happened? What's wrong? That kind of thing. You know, everybody wants to slap you on the back when things are going good. Yeah. And find the nearest bus to throw you under when things are going bad, which is a little out of balance, I think. But <laughs> nonetheless, that's how fans are. How do you, X? How do you handle that? Man, you ignore it. Really, um, you understand. Fans are passionate. They love the game. You know, they're going to, like how you said, they're going to enjoy the wins with you, you know, and hate the lows with you. But uh, for us, you have to turn the pace so quick week to week that you can't, I don't know, you can't dwell on a loss. You just have to learn from it and move on. This is the NFL, 32 teams. They're all good. They're all pros. They're all coached well. And so uh, nothing wrong with hating losing because nobody hates losing more than us. And frankly, I would imagine your world's kind of been a little bit of a whirlwind the last 24 hours because the game ended at, a, what, 1030 last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, locker room, media availability, whatever. What time did you guys get back to DFW this morning? Uh, we landed 1.45 or so, Okay, maybe 2. And yeah. then what time did you have to be here today? Uh, I was here at 11. All right, so hey, you guys really haven't had time to have a lot of outside Sit noise. And, and I think you guys both, for the most part, at least I was looking for it earlier, you guys both avoid social media, right? Yes, or, or, as I, much as I can. At least I don't see you guys on Twitter or anything. I'm on Twitter. Oh, you are? Okay. I was looking for account. it. I have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> just a burner so that's account. That's the best way to avoid uh, negativity, I think, is just to stay off social media. But the, the grocery store, like Brad mentioned, is interesting. So, so I don't know if you guys are going to the grocery store. I guess Tuesday would be your grocery store day, right? Yeah. That's your day off. 
LP, yeah. how often do you get recognized out in public? Well, I live pretty far away, uh, smaller town. Tulsa? So a lot of people, <laughs> oh, yes, <yeah>. no. <laughs> he flies in. People, I guess, know me, but, you know, it's not a... They respect Daily you. respect, yeah. Literally this morning I had to call um, my AC guy, and, um, <laughs> and the lady secretary picked up the phone and said, y'all fought well, y'all had a great game. So, <laughs> you know, it, it can't really go against that, right? How often do you get recognized, X? Uh... I don't know, every now and then. It's more like, uh, hey, you look like that WWE guy. Or, hey, <laughs> and, and until um, I enjoy it. It has to be stature for both of you because you're both tall guys. You're in a city with lots of professional sports teams. People assume there's something there. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a big guy. I've, yeah. I get that everywhere, but big <laughs> a lot of big guys. Big know? guys. LP, have you played in every single NFL stadium? Um, sure I have. I'm sure you have now, yeah. 15 seasons in. Would you say that the Saints are the loudest? Well, Seattle's pretty loud. Ooh, Seattle's Seattle. loud. I think yeah. the new Minnesota um, Vikings stadium is pretty loud yeah. as well. It is. Yeah, Kansas City. Oh, Kansas City, that's true. Arrowhead. Um, i trying to think. Well, the old Minnesota Vikings, that was in the old, uh, what's it called, RCA Dome? The, yeah, Metro Dome. No, that was Indy. Uh, that was Metro Indy, but Dome, Me- yeah. Metro Dome, the yeah. Triple H. Where they blow the horn. Yeah. yeah. The Humphrey, uh, Hubert H. Humphrey. Yeah. Hubert, yeah. yeah. That Metro was Dome. loud. I'm trying to remember what else. Um, but mainly those indoor domes, you know, they're tough to beat. And New Orleans, obviously, is one of them. God, that's, a fun, uh, that's a fun little party game right there. Uh, can you name all the stadiums that LP is playing? <laughs> well, do, it has to be all of them. Do do that in your head, and we'll take a break and come back and, and see if any of us, including LP, can do that. <laughs> uh, and later uh, later on, if you have questions for uh, Xavier Suofilo or LP Latasar, Stephen will have the microphone, and we'll uh, mix amongst you in the crowd here at the Omni Frisco. This is our regular Monday night stop during the Cowboys season, almost every single Monday. Uh, at 6 o'clock locally, and we are happy to have all of you listening on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. Delighted to have those of you who have come out to be with us this evening, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, streaming on DallasCowboys.com. The Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons, is brought to you in part by Omni. Next time you travel for an away game, here's how to make the most of it. Stay with Omni Hotels and Resorts. They have 60 premier locations coast to coast with things like world-class spas, championship golf, and great dining. Visit OmniHotels.com to learn more. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys. And by Lou Casey, Lou Casey Bootmaker, now open at the Star in Frisco. Shop from a variety of world-class handmade cowboy boots as well as all new signature apparel and accessories. Visit their brand new store today, right here at the Star, right across the street, over there, and experience the tradition that is... Lou Casey Bootmaker. We'll be right back on the Cowboys Hour.
No highlight coming back here. Just a bump. Back, back, back. back. To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. I'm Brad Sham with Kevin Turner and Taylor Stern. Woo. Delighted to have you with us. Woo. Yeah, Woo. That was Taylor with a self-identifying woo. woo. Gotta and, get the uh, energy up. Thank you. We woo. are we are delighted to have Xavier Suofilo and LP Latasar as our guests this evening, and we should go no further than this without uh, recognizing where Louis Philippe Latasar, the noted still Canadian and now American, <laughs> uh, stands in the annals of Dallas Cowboys players hmm. because there's only one player in club history who has played in more games than that man right there. Ooh. Only one. That should deserve a round of applause. For, wake up, Absolutely. everybody. This yeah. is another good trivia question. And who was the one? Yes. Yep. I don't know it. Yeah. It would be that Jason Witten film. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh. That's an easier one. Really? Yeah. How, okay. how quickly they forget. Um, <laughs> I was overthinking that. Do you, LP? are you, t LP, too close to it, doing it every day? Are you just coming to work every day? Or, or do you ever think about, okay, that's pretty cool? Yeah, obviously it's pretty cool to play this long uh, with one team. Um, True. You know, most people play in different teams their whole career. But to play with one, it's, it's a big deal. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, you, you approach, you know, every week um, the same, and it, somehow 15 years later you're still doing it. Um, but it's, no, it's been a great kind of, <laughs> no, um, voyage, if you want. Um, you know, just a um, lot of great teams, a lot of great players, a lot of great coaches, a lot of great people around the organization. Um, no, you don't take that for granted ever, um, you know, because every week is brings its own challenges. And, um, you know, just made the best out of it the past 15 years, yeah. Try to, try to do some kind of a story on LP every year so people understand the remarkable consistency with which he has done his job. I just don't know anyone who's done uh, anything in, in this sport or maybe any other sport that long that well. I, I, if you made a mistake, then I don't know when it was. And, and I've seen every snap of your career. Right. And so, I mean, I just think that's remarkable. And so every uh, every uh, year or two, I ask LP, uh, are, are you still enjoying it? Dumb question, because obviously you're enjoying it. Oh, yeah. You, 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 you wouldn't be doing job. it. Um, can, will you do it for a while more? Because you're just as good as you've ever been. Yeah. I mean, as long as the body follows, you're all right. <laughs> Um, uh, once the body kind of goes the other way from your mind, that's when you got to stop. Yeah, but you do some extraordinary things to make sure that that doesn't happen. Tell people a little bit about yeah. how over the last few years your physical routine has evolved to keep that from happening. Yeah, flexibility, mobility, right? Um, that's what kind of <laughs> gets everybody as you get older. Um, so yoga has become a big, big deal for me. Um, I do it about... 40, 50 times in the off season, um, and I do it again during the season, probably once a week, once every two weeks. Um, that's a big deal. Uh, hot yoga, uh, and um, hot yoga of, only. Uh, yes, only. Um, and um, I do it in Fort Worth, a studio called Soul Sweat. Uh, really good people. Um, they've helped me oh, tremendously over the years. Um, and then you gotta you gotta stay active. You can't stop, right? You know, if you stop, you get worse. So you gotta keep something every day. You gotta do something. Well, every you got little kids. I do. What so I run it? around a lot. Yeah. So that's taken yeah. care of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, how's how has the job changed? How has the position changed? The and you've done it for. Yeah. Let's see. Parcells was your first coach. Correct. Here, and and so everybody, you know, since how how does it change under a different coach, and how has it changed under different special teams coaches? Well, the, the, the snapping part has always been the same, obviously. The punter is always going to be at 15 yards, and the holder is always going to be at 8 yards. Um, where it changed is about 10 years ago, there's a huge safety precaution thing that happened in the NFL with everybody, and the snapper was one of them. And um, 
they weren't allowed to run me over anymore. <laughs> to put in simple terms. And um, so that helped, you know, longevity, if you want, in, in, uh, for my career. The, um, so, you know, but you gotta, still got to stay fit. You still got to be able to block a guy every once in a while. Um, and I got to help protect the A-gaps with the big fella right here, right, on, on field goal. So, um, you know, it just, um, you know, <laughs> it's just, you got to stay active, whatever we do. I feel like yoga was popular with the alignment last year, too. Wasn't it Tyron had started that, and then you guys were all kind of doing a little bit of yoga at training camp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think Tyron, did. I actually have never talked to him about it, but I do know in camp we were doing more of it. And uh, in the off season, I don't do it as much as OP, but I myself enjoy some hot yoga, too, um, just to stay limber and be able to be flexible. Can I ask you what the difference is as a guy who I, clearly, by my appearance, has not done a lot of yoga? Um, can you explain to me the difference in hot yoga and regular yoga and goat yoga and all these <laughs> different types of yogas? I think that the hot now? yoga has to do with Lululemons, I think. Yeah. Okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. Brad Sham, zinger. Yeah. Hot yoga is just it's hot. So it's, it's like just like degrees. Texas yoga? Like, <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, you just go outside? Uh, you know, put your speedo on and let's go. Oh, okay, oh so it's goodness. like that. Okay, I don't know if it's like you put no, on no, like a not, sweat not you, Not you, KT. <laughs> oh, no. Not you. Not you. <laughs> but hey, he's got me uh, kind of... <laughs> I kind of feel like, well, yeah, I feel like I'm ready to go do some yoga. He's motivated me to get into yoga now. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. It's hot all yoga about seems the like, temperature. Yeah, it seems like a sweatsuit might be hot yoga or something right. where you're sweating more. I don't know. Uh, how, how long are the, like, yoga classes? About an hour, an hour and a half. Would you ever do goat yoga? I don't know what that is. What is goat yoga? I did that this past summer. What is goat yoga? I literally did yoga while baby goats were crawling all over us. Huh. Standing on your back, Standing right? on my back. Interesting. Kind of just running all over you. And they they actually, like, don't notice you at all as a human. So they're just crawling over you, and you're just doing the poses, and the instructor is going as normal. And There's puppy yoga now. It's a it's a thing. I'm serious. Now you're, now you're making that up. No, I'm not. Wow. Like, you'll be down, like, whatever your pose. Uh, I don't know the name of the poses. And you just have a little puppy goat? just kind of looking at you, so you're kind of getting yeah. through it, you know? Well, That's a real thing. Maybe, maybe we it's, should work it into the thing. mix. It's yeah. a real thing. LP, you were saying wonderful. some of the great teams that you've been around. Yes. What it, would you categorize as the best team that you've been around? Hard to beat 2007. That one sticks out immediately. Yep. Uh, 2016, pretty good. The 11-game win streak. Yeah. Um, that's another good year. 2009, actually, we beat New Orleans when they were 13-0. Yeah. Uh, 10 years ago, right, in December. And I remember that game because DeMarcus Ware, um, I mean, broke his neck. I mean, it was something like that. And he came and had three sacks or made a, I mean. Got game. carried off the field, Car- a home game against San Diego on the Sunday before you played in New Orleans on Saturday night. That's right. I mean, he had probably the, it's probably the most remarkable game I've ever seen a human. <laughs> I mean, it was unbelievable. I mean, it was just um, and it was just great. We end up beating him. They end up winning the Super Bowl, obviously that year, but we beat him in New Orleans. Uh, that's ten years ago now, and um, I know we've had some. I mean, this year you never know. I mean, you can have one of this might be one of the best. You never know. All right, I want to before we get off of this and and hear uh, from Xavier about his journey. Um, I, for people who have not heard. The, your version of the week that you became a cowboy, that, that it's a pretty interesting story. Cowboys are playing back-to-back weeks, San Francisco and Oakland, staying in California. Yeah. You're out of work. Yep. <laughs> John Condo, who just retired, uh, was the long snapper at the time. Bill Parcells decided he wasn't happy with John. And so you got a call to come to San Jose State for basically an audition, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Tuesday uh, called Bruce DeHaven. Um, the late Bruce DeHaven, late who Bruce was, DeHaven. was your special was the special was teams coach. coach. Um, and um, this is in 2005. And I drove down to Tuesday night. Had to work out the Wednesday morning. And uh, they signed me in the trailer home because they're in between games. So they had to have a trailer home for all the equipment and everything. I signed the paperwork with Todd Williams. Um, and, um, yeah, very, you know, random week. Uh, <laughs> somehow I got the job, uh, played on 
Sunday against Oakland. Um, and I played at Berkeley, which is the stadium's 20 minutes away. Um, stay in the same hotel that we stayed for at Berkeley um, that week. And um, went back to Sacramento, get my stuff, and then flew out of Sacramento the next day to go to Dallas. I mean, it was very, um, but very random week, obviously, and got the job. And what was the interaction like with Parcells that day? Um, you know, he pretty much looked like deep into my soul through my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and he figured out something. I don't know what he figured out. He's like, yeah, this is my guy. But you know, it was really cool. So that was the week, if I'm wrong, uh, if I'm wrong, tell me. But that was the week they stayed there throughout the week. Correct. Because, yeah. And Correct. teams usually don't do that anymore. Correct. No, and they do. Do they? Do they really? Yeah, New Orleans just stayed in Bellevue before the Seattle game. Oh, really? Two weeks ago. Because yeah. they had uh, back They played L.A. and then they oh, went up wow. to Seattle. Oh, yeah. wow. That's so teams incredible. still do it. Yeah. Because yeah. I believe that year they played, the Cowboys played in San Diego in week one. And then came home and in week came two. came home and then it was San Francisco and Oakland. Oakland. Right. But that's just kind of a – that's such a crazy story because yeah. now 15 years later or 16 years later, whatever it is, here you are and you're now a member of the Metroplex. There you go. <laughs> and is that home for, for good for you? For good, yeah. I mean, uh, we're actually that? not in the Metroplex. Yeah. We're outside of the Metroplex. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On purpose, where the yoga is hotter. <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna to take a break and be back with more with Xavier Suofilo and LP Latasar. And thanks to Jack Black, want to use what the pros use. Jack Black is the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys. Get your Jack Black starter for JB Faves plus a full-size lip balm for just 10 bucks with free shipping at getjackblack.com. Use code Team JB, and of course, thank you, Albertsons. When it comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be right back on the Cowboys Hour.
Back, back, back. Touchdown! To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. Welcome back to the Cowboys Hour with Kevin Turner and Taylor Stern. I'm Brad Sham with our special guest this evening, Cowboys offensive lineman Xavier Suafilo and long snapper LP Latisar. Next week, Monday night, uh, it'll be a very defensive show. Very defensive back show. Uh, Chidobe Ouzie and Jordan Lewis will be here next Woo. Monday night, and we're looking forward to that. Now, we uh, we have uh, heard a little bit, if you hadn't heard it before, of LP's uh, travelogue to get to this <laughs> record-holding place. Now, um, if you didn't know, uh, Xavier Suofilo was a high draft choice of the Houston Texans. Did we not establish that the last offensive lineman in the draft taken before X was Zach Martin? Right? Yeah. He was the, it was him, and then the next one was you. I believe so. Might have been somebody, a tackle, but no, it was Zach. Yeah. So, uh, Houston, uh, a stop off in Tennessee, and, uh, and now you're here. Yeah. And before that, UCLA, but in the middle of your UCLA career, mm -hmm. uh, you did two years on a mission. Yeah. Do you mind talking about that a little bit? I think it's fascinating. Yeah, no, I um, so I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, a lot of people know them as Mormons. And uh, if you've ever seen, you know, uh, random different places, there's, um, you know, you see two, um, two missionaries, women or men, you know, with name tags, you know, dressed in dress clothes, you know, and knocking on doors or riding bikes around, wearing white shirts, ties, all that kind of stuff. Um, those are... Um, uh, missionaries for, um, for our church and I did that uh, after my freshman year at UCLA for two years so I played 2009 and then I served my mission for 2010 and then 11 and then I went back to UCLA and played 12 and 13. Where'd you serve your mission? So I was uh, they're all divided up geographically um, I was part of the uh, Florida Tallahassee mission and that extended from Tallahassee. Now you're from Utah? Yeah and so I stayed in the states and that extended from uh, that covered Tallahassee, all the way west to Pascagoula, Mississippi, all parts of southern Alabama, um, basically that panhandle of Florida, and as north as Tifton, Georgia. And so, um, you, I mean, you're, you're assigned to areas and uh, different sort of thing. And I was um, called to speak Spanish. Mm. Did you speak Spanish before that? Not even a little bit. Nope. And you learned it. Yeah. You had to learn it for the mission. Yeah. So what's the difference between Tipview, Utah, and Pascagoula, Mississippi? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I mean, um, it was almost like a foreign country to me just because I had never been to that part of the country, you know, but a lot of really, really, really good people, you know, that I've met and people that I've uh, kept up with over the years. So when you got back to UCLA, how were you different than when you went on the mission? Well, I was just, you know, a little more grown up, um, a little more mature, um, there's certain situations that you come across uh, that are on your mission, you know, that are, you know, you, you try to help people with real life problems, you know, problems that as an 18, 19, 20 year old boy, you've never come across before in your life either. Uh, you meet people with uh, real life challenges and trials and, you know, struggles and, you know, it's just really a way uh, for us to be able to serve them and uh, kind of share a message of happiness that we have experienced, you know, in our life and for me, uh, growing up, you know, very religious, um, I think that, you know, with my family and our family life, you know, my parents have, you know, believed in in that, and it's it's helped make, I don't know, like a happy life, you know, growing up, and, and for me, having those same uh, beliefs, your mission is really to go and uh, share that message with other people and serve them and love them in any way that, uh, capacity that you can and, and are willing um, to do, and if they're acceptive of it, then great. If they're not, then great. You know, they're still human beings. And, um, you know, it was just a very, very, like, grow up uh, experience, you know, for me. Very, very memorable. I love the story that they built you a specialized bike yeah. for your mission trip. How did that come to be? Did you realize, like, I, w I need to bike out right. here because you're going such a great distance? Right. And you've talked about your size earlier that people mm -hmm. think you might be a WWE wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> but... How did they go about making you this special bike for this mission trip? No, it was just uh, my mission president, uh, the guy who presides over all of our missionaries. He just called me in one day and said, hey, an anonymous donor uh, 
bought this bike for you so you could use it on your mission, you know, because a lot of missionaries are, there's a certain um, allotted miles if your car has an area, if your, if your area has a car and you want to stay within it per month, it's all very, very detailed. Uh, but a uh, bike is very, very, you know, effective um, through a long area, except I just couldn't ride any of them because I was too heavy. And so <laughs> somebody um, donated a bike and uh, to this day, I don't know who did it, um, but I still have the bike and um, I use it in off season. Do you? Yeah. That's awesome. So you were, you said you were assigned, but were there still options? Were there two or three options from a regional standpoint, or was it just no? You, you just got to go and you go where they uh, tell you to go. And it was both years. Yeah. Two okay. Years. So mm-hmm. then you go back to UCLA, mm-hmm. and then you're in game shape, and you started Absolutely. right away. Like how did that? How did that happen? No, I'm not, not in game shape. I get home. <laughs> let's see. I got home in the end of January, beginning of February, and uh, I did play that fall, but it was. To say it was easy to get back into shape and lift weights again what is like, would be li- I'd be lying to you if so, I said it was easy. So. so you'd given up football activity for a couple of years? Yeah. Pretty much? Yep. Wow. I had to do it. Um, no sense in, you know, controlling. Uh, if I couldn't control it, you know, there's no sense in, uh, you know, missing it or doing all that kind of stuff. Obviously, I still love football, but I put that aside to, to go on my mission, and I knew that if I concentrated on that and I came back, then – you know, I'd get the opportunity to get to play. That speaks to the athleticism of a, a professional football player mm-hmm. like himself. No question. Normal guys like us probably couldn't do that. Oh, uh, there's no doubt. You have, I know you've worked out some at center. You're primarily a guard. Right. Have you ever long snapped? You know, I never have. <laughs> I mean, I've practiced a few times when I was in high school, but no, I have not. So this is interesting to me. I, um, I don't know what made me ask. It, it, usually, the last few years uh, in camp, they'll bring in another long snapper because uh, why make LC, uh, LP at this uh, stage of his life bend over any more than absolutely necessary? <laughs> so, so there's an but there's no other holder. So Chris Jones, who's the punter, does literally all the holding. And I asked somebody a couple of years ago, who's the backup holder? And the answer was. Well, Chris is the backup holder. There he is, is. There's no. There is no backup holder. This so, year we have actually a backup holder. You do. Yeah. And who Ricky is that? Is cool. He's a receiver. A receiver. Yeah. Uh, is it Randall? Yeah. Randall Cobb. And, 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 <laughs> just because he's such a great natural athlete, he is. unbelievable. He was a quarterback. Yep. And he and he was a running back. So yeah. why wouldn't he be a holder? Right. Now, um, from time to time, guys will take snaps, but there's. <clears throat> I mean, there is no other long snapper on the roster. No. Who Who's the backup long snapper? Tight end. Jarwin. There you go. Mm-hmm. Does, he, does he have a, he's got a little history in that, right? I don't know. No? Does he? No, I was just guessing. I don't know. <laughs> I was hoping you would <laughs> say you, yes. Man, you, you sold smart. that so well. Yeah, I went for it. I was proud of you. Sometimes yeah, it works out. It's incredible. <laughs> so I think we need to get Cooper Rush holding. I think we need to get him in there. We tried. Oh, no good. Randall's better. Okay. Yeah. You got to go with a better guy. So yeah. Rand, Randall's no, got it. No question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what other what other sports did you play? Did you play hockey? Played hockey. Yeah. Hockey, soccer. Ducks. Swain. Now X, water X, polo, X, X just know, gave golf. him a little fist bump. So are you a big hockey fan? <laughs> no, I just respect anybody who can hit a ball this big and skate at the same That's time. That's true. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No kidding. So I heard. Swam. Yeah, swam. Did water polo. Uh, wow. What else would I do? Ping pong. Uh, I mean. And golf, obviously, is my hobby. Uh, it's what I do outside of hobby football. Hobby or, like, second job? I feel like you're well, just, you uh, could yeah, get paid for it. No, it. no way. <laughs> no. If Tony can't make it, I can't make it. He almost <laughs> did. He almost did. He was so close to the cut. Are you watching? We were talking. I watched about- it, yeah. I watched some of it, yeah. Oh, that's hardcore. Yeah. For him. That's yeah, hardcore. That's, you're, you're going against the best. <laughs> no, I mean that yeah, you watched him playing in yeah. whatever tournament that was. That was Friday, Friday afternoon late. The I mean, yeah, it was a, Are you the best yeah. golfer on the team now? Brett Besh, pretty good. He's uh, he's our strength conditioning assistant. Um, he's pretty solid. Um, trying to think. Cooper Rush, pretty good. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of good players. Did you play with Tony when he was here still? Played a few times. He, yeah, by far better than me. LP, I was always jealous of him because on his veteran days at training camp, you can go and just – Hit around. No, out there. not Veterans Day. On my days off. On your Veterans day. day, I don't know. I don't. I would never do that. 
You would never do no, that. No, no, Think no. about it because the golf course is Just right there. Just because you would do it doesn't mean that <laughs> Just LP because I would do that would and you think after 15 years they'd say, you know what, LP, you deserve it. How often well, do you play golf in season? Oh, uh, well, now, now we have Tuesdays off. Uh, I play probably once every two weeks, maybe a month. Yeah, Something like that. Have to handle but it's the literally AC. like nine holes. And it's not much. Yeah. I just go over there, and, and he's in his car a lot because he doesn't live. You know, he lives outside the metroplex. Outside, just mm-hmm. outside the metroplex. Yeah. X. What other sports did you play? Grown up, um, dabbled in a little soccer. Um, really, uh, but mainly basketball. And when football. did you? When did you start growing? Shoot, like third grade. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> I. I what position? I mean, I, I'm kind of a soccer guy. What yeah. what position did you play? Um, I played. Uh, I like to play defense, and I think I don't know. Depending, is, yeah, just defense, right? Defender, yeah, and then keeper, and you keeper, know, so, yeah. Being from Utah with no professional football team, what team did you grow up liking? I was a diehard Oakland Raider fan. Really? Oh yeah, it was really interesting, actually. Um, Growing up, every family kind of has their thing, you know, and my dad enjoyed watching football, so did my mom. So there's four kids in my family. I'm the oldest. My dad thought it would be pretty cool, you know, just, you know, uh, since we liked watching football as a family, to make everybody uh, choose a professional team and stick with them for life, you know. And so he kind of made, <laughs> he kinda made a template. <laughs> well, hold on. I'm getting wait, there. How, I'm getting there. How, how old were you? There. How hold old on. were you? Uh, I was like seven. Oh, okay. <laughs> seven, eight. But everybody, c- you couldn't choose till you're old enough to, to kind of make the choice, right? So now, yeah. And so, you know, he, made a, he just made it fun for us, made a contract. And the only uh, fine print that said, you know, made it null and void was that if you ended up being employed by another team. So, uh, okay. You know. And you picked the Raiders. It was pretty fun. Yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. And what was your dad's favorite team? My dad was a Houston Oilers fan, big Earl Campbell okay. guy. Okay. Mm-hmm. And your siblings? Uh, my sister... Uh, just under me, Indianapolis Colts, my brother, New England Patriots, and my little sister, Minnesota Vikings. And your mom? Yep. Uh, San Diego Chargers, now the LA Chargers. So. Wow. But no they're Cowboys. All, but they're, very all, they're all big Cowboy fans now. Now so. they are. Yeah, yeah. now yep. they are. Absolutely. Very good. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back with more with your questions for L.P. Latasar and uh, Xavier Suofilo. We're delighted to have you with us this evening on the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertsons and brought to you in part by Omni. Next time you travel for an away game, here's how to make the most of it. Stay with Omni Hotels and Resorts. They have 60 premier locations coast to coast with things like world-class spas, championship golf, and great dining. Visit OmniHotels.com to learn more. Omni Hotels and Resorts, the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys. And by Lucchese Bootmaker, now open at the Star in Frisco. Shop from a variety of world-class handmade cowboy boots as well as all new signature apparel and accessories. Visit their brand new store today and experience the tradition that is... Lucchese Bootmaker. Back with Xavier Suofilo and LP Latisar right after this.
Back, back, back. To the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertsons. And broadcasting live from the Omni Frisco at the Star. And it's brought to you by Papa John's. When the Cowboys win, like, you know, next Monday, get 50% off the regular menu price pizzas the next day at papajohns.com with the promo code COWBOYSWIN. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's, not valid with any. Uh-oh, my copy's flying away in the wind. Not valid with any other discounts. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Also, Brad, brought to you by Albertsons. When it comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Well, have you always been 76, Xavier Suofilo? No. No, I've been a lot of different numbers. What number were you at UCLA? Our number 56. Mm. Ooh, yeah. Can you name the two players uh, who were drafted around you? The, the player drafted before you and the player drafted after you? Yeah. Oh, you do, okay. Teddy Bridgewater and Demarcus Lawrence. Nailed it. Wow. Nailed Dang. it. Dang. Yeah, man's a student of the game. There we go. Uh, what, what number were you uh, in uh, Houston? I was number 71, and then I was – no, number 70 when I first got there, and then 71 after my first year. And mm-hmm. Tennessee? 76. Yeah. And um, – what number did you wear when you were a star defensive tackle at uh, the University of California? 99. Mm. 99. 99. The big 99. A very manly number. But I started as a 91. Did you? Yep. And did you, to 99. did you I ask for 91 it. when you got here? Or did the they only just... number they had in the 90s, and I didn't want a 40s number. So I yeah. just decided to get the 91. <laughs> For, uh, with 40 number would not look good on uh, I don't blame you, Milpia, a man of your yeah. stature. How, yeah. in, how interesting was it to play with uh, Nick Martin, right? Would he have been there still when you – Oh, yeah. He would have been after you. No, yeah, I, I played with Nick. So how, can you compare and contrast him and Zach? Yeah, say the brother scoop yeah. right here. They're brothers. I mean, different personalities, a lot of similarities. Yeah, cool guys, man. I like them both. Yeah. They, were, they were hoping for something kind of – some brother gossip drama. There's no drama. The Martin the brothers man, seem just, very there's dramatic. No drama the Martins. They just they just play football and they're good at it, man. <laughs> yeah. They are good. Uh, Steven, you got a question in the audience? Yeah, I got a question from Larry here. Thanks, Ed. Gentlemen, let's go back to when we were young and football was not even in the picture of your lives. What would you be planning to do in your future? Ooh, good question, Larry. Well, um, I wanted to be an engineer, uh, and uh, one of the big reasons why I did go to Berkeley is the engineering school there. And I realized that with football scheduling, engineering school was going to be really hard. Um, so, obviously, football <laughs> uh, end up being my career, um, but I, I still um, I end up uh, graduating in geophysics. Um, Similar-ish to engineering. Um, you graduate. You have a you have a, a bachelor's degree in geophysics. I do. What Th- engineering? That's so field? intimidating. I don't no, mind not. telling you. Yeah, <laughs> it really kind of is actually. Nah. What engineering field did you want to go into? I want to do civil engineering. Um, I've always liked building, like architecture stuff. So civil engineering, structural, all that stuff. It's like yeah. Travis was a computer engineer guy. Oh Travis yeah. Travis can allegedly build a computer. From the from the ground up, so I, I'm fascinated that. by that because I can't do any of that. That is stuff. fascinating. I couldn't do what that. What about you, X? Um, I've been wanting to do this since I was in second grade. So okay, nice. Um, since he chose the I have, Raiders, like, I have a note that like that I wrote that said I want to play in the NFL. But um, um, for me, it was it was something you know outdoors, something in the equestrian world. A uh, big horse guy. Uh, cool. I grew up with horses, riding them, um, and I always was fascinated with uh, getting involved in it. In, in some capacity, not necessarily, um, you know, for show and performance, but really just, uh, you know, training, um, breeding, all that different kind of thing. And um, especially down here in Texas, you learned a lot about um, reining and cow horses, too. And coming from Utah, that's a very popular, too. And, and um, so, yeah, something like that. And I, I had a neighbor who was a fishing game warden growing up, and he was always in the mountains or always on the lake or always doing something with, with outdoors, with animals and such. And I always thought that was cool, man. So, Do you still have that love for horses? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Do you have horses? I do. 
How many? I have five. Ooh, that's a wow. lot. Wow. Well, five and a half. There's one in the oven. Okay. <laughs> and, and so do you consider yourself a horse breeder? Um, not not yet. Not full blown. I guess, I mean, you got to have, no, I, I, I guess I wouldn't. I have a pregnant mare. Well, I'm not a horse breeder, but I would lo- love to, you know, do that in a, in a big way when I'm when I'm done playing football. Hopefully so ga- not for a while. Gallup got all this uh, attention uh, for having a horse as a pet. Uh huh. But you got five and a half horses. Right. And and where are they? They're in Utah, at my dad's place. Yeah. Yep. And and what do you? I mean, do you do they just run and be horses, or do they yeah. just horse around, or <laughs> no, I mean, just uh, horsing around? Could, yeah, no, could we, not um, resist that. Yeah, we have a um, <laughs> couple of riding uh, gillings that uh, we use actually for riding, but the other horses they can't ride are, are yearlings who haven't been um, trained yet. And um, and then I have a mare who's just strictly a brood mare used for breeding. And um, she's got a like a six month old full uh, Philly colt um, right now that we haven't weaned her yet, but she's pregnant with another. So uh, yeah, we're just kind of in the business of that and seeing what we get. Who, who do you talk horses with in the locker room? <laughs> you know what? I don't talk horses with anyone in the locker room. They all, a lot of people know I love them, but I, I, like I don't really. Is there anyone on the team who has? Probably doesn't come up very often. Yeah. Yeah. No. They're like you're a big music guy with everyone I in like the music locker room. Too, yeah. You always know what other people like music wise. I like to be cultured that way. Yeah. I I just like music, man. What so. music do you like, LP? Pretty much everything. Um, What's the station you're turning on when you get? So my big station, I have Sirius XM in the car. Um, obviously, the Spectrum is a big one for me. Oh, so yes. it's rock from 60s to now. Uh, I like that one. Um, That's a good driving channel right there. It is. First Wave. I'm a big fan of 80s alt rock. Oh, yeah. Uh, and what is it? Um, lithium, so 90s grunge. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I like kind of anything. I'll put Sinatra. I'll put classical. Um Whatever. I mean, are, are you a, are you headphones before the game? Never. Guy? No, I don't. I don't put headphones. I listen to music in the car at home, but I don't. I'm not a big headphone guy. No. French music. Do you listen to French yeah. music? Yeah, I do. Georges Brassens, Felix Leclerc. Yeah, there's a lot of those guys. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, now, you just, now you just show it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think this might be our first show where we've had two guests who uh, speak so many different languages. Spanish, well, I just speak Canadian. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two highly yeah. cultured individuals, <laughs> right? Here. Very cultured. They, they are. They are not on here just by uh, by accident. Do you? Are you a headphones guy before the end? You know, I used to be earlier in my career and in college, but since I've been here, I haven't been. Yeah. Uh, the Jumbo Joe. Looney, uh, he, yeah, he, he takes care of the music. <laughs> I, I've, and, and I and have been told, I don't, wanna, I don't want to go places we're not allowed, but I do like to peel back the curtain from time to time. Um, traditionally, all of the especially professional pregame locker rooms with which I've been familiar were uh, church-like, very quiet, serious, mm-hmm. somber. But I'm told there's music out, out in the atmosphere in your pregame locker room. Can you confirm or deny? Oh, it's confirmed. Yeah, Joe, Joe does a great job. I mean, he puts music from every genre. Yep. Um, man, I can't really go against it. Everybody enjoys it. He's a oh, DJ yeah. now. We'll, we'll have make a note, please, uh, Taylor. That Writing this down. When we when we have Joe on here, that'll be a feature. We'll get him to do a playlist for us. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, That'd be great. I want I want to thank both of you guys for coming out. It's the beginning of your day off. Uh, yep. I know you were just at work, uh, but you also got back at two in the morning. So, thank you both very much, Xavier Suafilo, LP Latasar. Appreciate what both of you do. Thanks thank you. very much. Uh, Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, KT. And next Monday night, we'll be right back here at 6 o'clock with Cheeto Awuzie and Jordan Lewis. I'm Brad Sham. Thanks for joining us on the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour at the Omni Frisco.